Maybe you've heard me talk about the words exclusion zone water before, and I often refer to it in its abbreviation called EZ water. Well, here's a little bit more about it and especially why it's very important to understand when it comes to cardiovascular health. So what is EZ water? Well, EZ water is actually the water that lives inside of our bodies. The water inside of our bodies is actually very different than the water that, uh, as it is in a glass. So we hear that the human body is full of water. We're 70% water by volume, but, and guess what? We're 99 out of every 100 molecules is water inside of us. That's a lot of water. And it's been assumed for quite a long time, including in all of my undergraduate studies, I assumed that when I heard those statistics about the human body and the amount of water we had, I assumed that the water inside of us was behaving just like water in a glass, liquid water. And that you know wasn't really exciting to me. It's like, okay, it's there, it doesn't do much. It's maybe more like cushioning or it allows things to dissolve into it. And yeah, that's great and all. I couldn't have been further from the truth when it come, came to actually the true role that water plays inside of us. In actuality, the water inside of us is called exclusion zone water, and it structures itself in a, in a way that gives it some very essential properties when it comes to the health of the cells and also the health of our blood flow and our lymphatic flow for that matter. And so to, to do just a brief primer on exclusion zone water and its importance for blood flow, I want you to recognize that this exclusion zone water forms next to all biological surfaces. Any water loving biological surface will create water in its structured format called exclusion zone water. This structured form of water actually has a charge to it. So I want you to picture what happens and, and what happens with this charge inside of our blood vessels. So what I'm going to show you here is like a cut through of a blood vessel. I just cut a blood vessel in half. And I want you to recognize the interior of the blood vessel. If that lining of that blood vessel, that's a biological surface. Easy water is forming around the inside of the blood vessel. Why does that matter? Well, as I said before, this easy water has a charge to it. Unlike liquid water in a glass, if I were to kind of count up all the electrons and all of the protons, they would cancel each other out. So the positive charges and the negative charges would cancel each other out. Water in a glass would be neutral, no charge. Turns out that when I count up the, uh, the uh, protons and electrons in exclusion zone water, it is electron rich. It has a negative charge to it. It's now all of a sudden a negatively charged interior surface of my blood vessels, the lining of my blood vessels. Guess, uh, guess where else this negative charge forms? It forms, this exclusion zone water forms around all of the things that are being transported through my blood. So these our red blood cells have this negative charge. Other proteins in the blood have this negative charge. Nutrients, minerals traveling through the blood have this negative charge around them, this exclusion zone water around them. Well, what happens when you try to touch two ends of the magnet together that are the same? So two, two south pole ends together. What happens when I take two magnets and try to touch them together? Both of the south ends are facing each other. Those magnets repel away from each other, right? Because like charges repel. I, it doesn't matter how much I try to force those two south ends of the magnet together to try to get them to touch, they, they can come really close, but they will never actually touch. And so that actually, that property of like charges repelling is a very important thing that's happening in our cardiovascular system to support blood flow. And it's dependent on exclusion zone water. So now picture this bloodstream again. I've got my blood vessel with exclusion zone water aligning the interior. I've got things floating through the blood that also have exclusion zones around them. As the as this blood, as these things start to get closer to the to the to the uh, touching the lining of the blood vessel, they can't. They're just going to get pushed along. They're going to propel and they're going to move themselves through the bloodstream as a way to help promote flow in the body. 
So I want you to recognize that having this exclusion zone water, this negative charge around blood vessels and around our endothelial lining is absolutely essential to kind of forcing things to not just get stuck and coagulate in a certain area and instead to allow them to flow through this system of pipes that we call the cardiovascular system. It goes a step further, and I'm, I'm not going to get into a ton of detail, but I also want you to know that as exclusion zone water forms around the lining, that at, um, a, a proton gets ejected. And as that proton gets ejected, um, it, it, as this exclusion zone, this negative charge forms and this positive charge then gets ejected, that ejection of the positive charge helps to organize the blood flow in a spiral vortex pattern. So now we've got this active pushing of the blood through this proton ejection. We've got the repelling of the surfaces away from each other because the like charges repel. That is how the blood is able to flow very well, or that's how it's designed to flow very efficiently throughout our entire bodies. What happens as we lose this charge? Well, you can see that in pictures of red blood cells that clump together, right? All of a sudden they've lost this halo of charge. They can clump together. That's stagnant. That is not well flowing blood. That's, those are blood cells that aren't really able to even hold nutrients individually because they're just so stuck and clumped together. The same thing happens in our lymphatic system as well. That de is dependent on flow too. And part of that flow is driven through muscular contractions, but believe it or not, a lot of that flow is also dependent on exclusion zone water forming in the lymphatic system as well. And so one of the most, uh, one of the most basic ways to understand how to support this when it comes to cardiovascular health and lymphatic flow and lymphatic health as well is to know that infrared light and heat help the body maintain adequate amounts of exclusion zone. Earthing and touching bare skin to the earth also helps the body to maintain adequate exclusion zones. You'll All of a sudden you'll see red blood cells after earthing go from their clumped form to their fluffed out uh, form where they're repelling away from each other again. And so some simple things can be applied or we can do on a regular basis to ensure that we're building adequate exclusion zone water in our cardiovascular system and in our, lymph in our lymphatic system to ensure that blood is flowing beautifully throughout the body to deliver nutrients where they're needed and the lymphatic system can take the waste away. We can clear the waste out. It's a very efficient system. And so earthing regularly five to 10 minutes periodically throughout the day. You can also earth, believe it or not, you can get the benefits of earthing by touching water that is grounded as well. So obviously that could be water in the earth, like a lake or a stream, but bathtubs, by definition, in most places by building code, bathtubs have to be earthed and grounded. So that's another place. Picture the warmth that you can get also, because beyond being a source of earthing and grounding, bathtubs are also typically uh, filled with warm water or hot water. Heat is infrared. So then you've got that beautiful source of infrared. And we know that that infrared heat and light is actually what causes this exclusion zone to be well-maintained. Um, it's a really beautiful, beautiful system. What else has that infrared? Sunlight. Always we're designed to be touching the earth and in full spectrum sunlight. We can also supplement with things like sauna use. It is why sauna use is tied in so many long-term studies to cardiovascular health. And in fact, one of my favorite studies on this was a, a cohort study that was done in Sweden that showed that regular usage of sauna um, I, approximately four times a week or more lowered cardiovascular mortality risk by 50%. That is huge. And the mechanism of action, I'm certain, has to do with how well that sauna helps to maintain exclusion zone water to drive blood flow very effortlessly throughout the entire cardiovascular system. So exclusion zone water, I mean, it really is a unifying factor. That's just one aspect of how our body uses it for health. We use it inside of our health, the, uh, the health of our cells, deep in our cells for certain things, for protein and hormone um, configuration, for detoxification purposes. There are so many reasons why it is essential to understand exclusions on water in the body and how to optimize it. So hope you found this interesting and I hope that really encourages you to dive deeper into understanding more about exclusions on water because it truly is a unifying factor that we can support on in a couple of really key ways in order to maintain optimum health throughout our entire body.
throughout every single cell, all of the systems. Exclusion zone water is key.